I have another flashlight from the company Claris I want to share with you today. This is the HL1 headlamp. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Claris for sending out the HL1 headlamp so that I could share it with you. Now, as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features, the physical and performance specifications for this headlamp, and then its operating modes. Then we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. Now, as far as performance specifications go, the main light, the primary light, has a high of 1200 lumens, but it will drop down to 500 lumens after one minute and then continue on for another two hours. It has a medium setting of 400 lumens, which will last two and a half hours. It has a low setting of 80 lumens, which will last 15 hours, and a moonlight setting of one lumen, which will last 100 hours. Now, the light does also have a strobe, which will blast out at 1,200 lumens, an SOS, which will blast out at 250 lumens, and a beacon, which will blast out at 100 lumens. Now, the auxiliary light, the one on the beside it, if it's in white light mode, it will run at 10 lumens and last 25 25 hours. If it is in red light mode, it also is rated at 10 lumens, but lasting 30 hours. Now, the light does also have a 1 meter impact resistance rating and an IPX6 waterproof rating. All right, just before we go through the operation of the Claris HL1 headlamp, I thought I'd give you a few close-ups, show you some of its features. So I think the thing they'll show you first, of course, is where the battery goes in. As you can see, it is the Claris branded 18650 2600 milliamp battery sealed here with O-ring, and that's where the spare O-rings will come in, not that you'll end up taking it out all that often. Primary light or primary LED, and again, you'll see this in operation in a moment, as well as the secondary LED. On this end of the lamp is the operating button right up here. This does all the functioning for the light itself. And just below it is the USB, micro USB charging port. I'll speak to that in a few moments' time. The head strap itself, or the mounting system, is like a hard rubber. It's uh, very sturdy. Uh, it does not hold on and click with detents as you turn it in position. Uh, because it's just kind of friction mounted, very tight. And you can mount this kind of an infant number of positions, which is good feature of course. You could remove it from here but I'm not sure why you would want to. This is not something you would pocket carry or carry or use any other way. If you had a different mounting system maybe but uh, you know that's not the way I can foresee using this headlamp. Now I do want to speak to the head straps themselves. So first off they're quite a heavy duty. They're quite thick, quite, quite a strong elastic sized nature to them and very adjustable and long so I found that to be quite interesting they're quite lengthy giving you a lot of adjustment of course they would have to be if you're going to use this in construction with a uh, in operation with a construction helmet that is now I will say overall this is a fairly heavy lamp compared to a lot of lamps on the market today so while that's not a, an issue if you're wearing it in construction it's not the choice I would make for trail running or even trail hiking still it will serve in those purposes we'll talk to that in a few moments time all right let's go into the operation of the light itself so as i mentioned everything is done from this button here so to turn to turn on the primary light is just a quick tap now i have it set you can just see it on there it is in moonlight now so that's at its lowest lumen setting and you saw when i first turned it on that this light was blue and that's giving you a status indication of the battery showing you that it has plenty of charge left it's not done in degrees but if it turns red it's time to recharge it's very simple operation that way now if I want to change lumen settings I can do one of two things I can go immediately to high with a double tap here or I can run through the lumen settings by pressing and holding the light while it is turned on and let's see if I can do this so you can see where it is going to happen I'll press and hold you see it's running through each of them I'll stop there turn it off and turn it back on so it does have memory for the last lumen setting. Now I'm going to turn it off. Now if I want to access the auxiliary light, same button again, you just have to press and hold. When you press and hold, it turns that light on. Press and hold and it will run through the red and the 
strobe, or not so much strobe as it is, just a signaling for the red light. All right, so that's all there is to it. If I turn it off and turn it back on, it does come back on in the primary light. And again, you can see where the blue light is indicating that it does operate. All right, a couple more features I wanna share with you. So I am gonna uh, be operating the strobe in a moment, so just be aware of that. So first thing I will show you has how to turn on the strobe. So once again, you're using the primary switch, but this time you're gonna double tap. The strobe is on. If I wanna to go to SOS, I double tap while the strobe is on. And if I want to go to Beacon, I double tap again while the SOS is on. And then it's just a steady beacon. And then I can turn it off. If I press it again, it comes back to the last lumen setting before operating with the uh, other features. Now, the light does have two other features, which I'll describe for you. First off, it has what's known as a breathing light, and that operates the blue light here. And the breathing light concept is that if you turn it on, and you can do so by a simple triple press of the switch, then this light will light up and go dim again. Now the advantage of that, of course, is if you are using this in a camping situation or have it at home or somewhere where you may not find it if it's in the dark, and uh, that breathing light will let you know where it is. So it just kind of turns on and off. Some people like it, some people don't. It's nice to know you can turn that feature off if you want. And the last thing, of course, is that there is an electronic lockout. So that prevents unintentionally turning the light on. And to turn the e-lock on or off, it's a quad press. So four quick presses of that switch and you'll turn the lock on and off. All right, doing some nighttime testing for the Claris HL1 headlamp. And now I have it on moonlight, but moonlight is not going to produce a whole lot of light. I didn't expect it to show up on camera, but let's take it up to low, medium, high. All right, high is amazing. It's not lighting up my backyard, my neighbor's backyard, and what is really impressive about this is that it's pretty much all flood. There's a little bit of a hot spot, but the floodlight is, you know, not 180 degrees, but it's well over 100 degrees spread out here. Wouldn't miss anything at all, all around you. Impressive amount of light, to say the least. All right, let's wrap this video with a few closing comments for the Claris HL1 headlamp. So what is it I like most about this? The simple operation, having one button and just knowing the sequence of presses to get access either to the primary light or the auxiliary light, it's very simple. It doesn't take a lot of practice to understand that. The overall simplicity of the light is actually a great feature for it. Rugged construction, without question, this is a good solid light and makes a good light if for someone who is in the position of needing one for construction, wearing this on the helmet. So I think that's another great feature for someone who's looking for this light. Now, after that, it's the beam cast. And the beam cast is quite a long distance. It does have a nice central hotspot. It does have a good amount of flood. Both are good for using for navigating through the woods at night. And of course, that low uh, white light or red light means those are lights that you can use where you don't want to blind yourself or anybody else you're with or don't want to ruin your night vision. So it's nice to have all of those features. Now, there are a few things that I think could be improved upon upon this light. Now, it is a extra heavy or heavy for this type of light. That's not necessarily a con, it's just something to be aware of. But there are a couple things I think could be improved on. And I've mentioned this a couple times now, and that is the micro USB charging port. So that's definitely old school in terms of what's what's considered common nowadays and it's not a big disadvantage you just have to be aware that it will take time to charge this light up from scratch so if you run this light down and you want to use that cable then it is going to take some time to charge it up alternatively of course you could sub the battery out for another one place this one in a charger that will charge them faster and that's an alternative of course so i think that's an upgrade that claris could do in a new version of this light, maybe they call it the HL2 or the HL1A. It would be nice to see an upgrade there. And the other thing that I was a little disappointed uh, in, and that was something I was looking for, was the ability to operate this light 
with a power bank plugged into it at the same time. You can, but it's only on low. It won't allow you to get to the higher lumen settings. And the reason I was looking for a light or thought this light might actually fill that niche is for search and rescue. Search and rescue people want a headlamp that they can be hands-free with, has good lumen settings, but also has a good runtime. Well, the 18650 battery has fairly good runtimes, but often not long enough for the type of situation they would be using it in. So having a the ability to plug in a power bank, which they can carry in a pocket and run a cable up to it, would have been a really great feature for this light. Unfortunately, you can do that, but it won't operate at the lumen settings you want to need for being out in the woods. Okay, that's everything I have to say about the Claris HL1 headlamp. Overall impression, heavy duty, simplicity, good quality, just needs a few upgrades by Claris. That's my opinion on it. Now, everything I've given you in terms of specifications will be in the video description below, as well as links to where you can take another look at this light. And if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.